Jones. Uh, you probably don't recognize me because I'm the guest, uh, even though I'm going to welcome the guests and visitors this morning, but my name is Pastor Hans Tomford. Uh, I serve as a dorm supervisor, tutor, teacher over at Martin Luther College. Uh, I graduated from our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary about two springs ago, the spring of 2019. Uh, and it's a blessing and privilege to lead you in worship this morning and to be out here and get to know you all here uh, in Fairfax. So I have not officially been to Fairfax until this morning, so uh, it's nice so far and it's nice to meet all of you people this morning as well. We're focusing today uh, in our worship service on a heart of repentance. And uh, we're going to read a couple things from the Bible, uh, one from Ezekiel, one from Philippians, and then what our sermon is going to be based on this morning from Matthew uh, 21. Uh, if I mess up anything, uh, I'm sorry in advance, uh, but I'll try to uh, shape up next time I'm here in November. So you can make sure that you write them down as we go through the service. Uh, God richly bless our worship this morning. We begin with our first hymn. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given us His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, 
Hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Mercifully grant, O God, that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the 18th chapter of Ezekiel, verses 1 to 4 and verses 25 to 32. Ezekiel was a prophet sent to those Israelites before they were going to be taken captive by the Babylonians. And those Israelites were excusing their sin saying that they were being punished for the sins of their fathers. Well, Ezekiel had to set their hearts straight because God punished them for their own sins and not for the sins of their own father. As we hear Ezekiel this morning tell us this proverb about the children being set on edge by what their fathers had done. No, Ezekiel directed the hearts of the Israelites to repent and to turn away from their own sin back to the Lord, the God of free and faithful grace in their life. We listen to the words of Ezekiel. The words of the Lord came to me. What do you mean, you who keep repeating this proverb concerning the soil of Israel? Fathers eat sour grapes and their sons' teeth are set on edge? As surely as I live, declares the Lord God, you will never again use this proverb in Israel. Indeed, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father is mine, just like the soul of the Son. The soul who sins is the one who will die. But you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Listen now, house of Israel. It is my way that is not fair. Is it not your ways that are not fair? If a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and practices unrighteousness, he will die because of it. Because of the unrighteousness that he has practiced, he will die. 
But if a wicked man turns from his wickedness that he has done and practices justice and righteousness, he will preserve his life, because he has seen and turned away from all the rebellious acts that he had committed. He will surely live, and he will not die. But the house of Israel says, The Lord's way is not fair. Is it really my ways that are not fair, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are not fair? Therefore, I will judge each one of you according to his ways, O house of Israel, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all the rebellious acts, so that you will not set out a stumbling block that makes you guilty. Throw off from yourselves all your rebellious actions by which you have rebelled, and obtain a new heart and a new spirit for yourselves. Why should you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies." declares the Lord God. So repent and live. This is the word of the Lord. We continue this morning with Psalm 25. second lesson this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Paul encourages us to have uh, a mindset of that of humility. Having that repentant heart parallels us with Christ, who was the perfect Son of God and claimed humility, even death on the cross, dying. All for us. And so we have that same mindset, knowing our hearts are forgiven. The heart's full of sin, but the heart's and the sin that God sees no more. We read Philippians 2 in Paul's letter. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, then make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being united in spirit and having one mind. 
Do nothing out of selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility consider one another better than yourselves. Let each of you look carefully not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed. But he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant. When he was born in human likeness, and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of our Lord. Our gospel this morning comes from the 21st chapter of Matthew, verses 28 to 32. We continue with the verse of the day. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel serves as the basis for our sermon this morning. Jesus said, What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. He came to the second and said the same thing. The second son answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? Those gathered around said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I tell you. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, but you did not believe him. However, the tax collectors and the prostitutes did believe him, even when you saw this. You did not change your mind and believe in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We continue with our hymn.
the name of Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, for those here and for those listening online with us this morning. Can you walk the walk and talk the talk? Can you put your money where your, your mouth is? That person talks big game, but can they really come through? You maybe have heard phrases like that before in your life, or maybe your kids have said something like that before when they've been high on their, their pride. But things like that, uh, usually when said after some sort of accomplishment or feat, or maybe someone needs a little dose of humility in their life, kind of cause us to think that sometimes people aren't very sincere with us, are they? whether it's something said in, in jest, or maybe it's something said that's serious, and, and you know the actual results, or, or you can maybe kind of see through their smoke a little bit and see the reality of the situation. And sometimes it's, it's easy for us to, to see if people are being insincere with us, if it's little things that are said. But really, it's, it's quite hard to see people's hearts and their sincerity, isn't it? In fact, we can't. Only the Lord can see if people are being sincere with us or not. But we look at their actions and if they're in line with what their heart is and what they say they are going to do, and if they resemble, we have a tendency to say they're being sincere with us. But other times it's hard, and other times they catch us off guard because they say one thing and then go and do the other. Maybe phrases like those pop out at you, or maybe it's some, something in some story when you're talking uh, with someone. But this morning, I'm not telling you those things because I want you to figure out people's sincerity in your own life. I'm asking you those things and having you think about those things because it's your Lord this morning who wants to know the sincerity of your heart as he does every day of your life. And he's the one who knows what you're thinking. He's the one who knows how sincere you are to his, his word. And even better, we're going to find out he's the one who sets your heart right. Through those hard heart conversations, and through that wonderful gospel message that he gives you. When we look at Jesus' parable that he spoke to those chief priests and elders of the law, that was his intent because he could see right into their heart and see how they weren't acting in line with God's will. And we take the theme for that, that parable this morning, the, the working today, the doing the will of our Father, and it's, it's setting the, the theme for our life and our sermon this morning. Work today, Jesus reminds us, accomplishing the Father's will and testifying to his truth. Uh, this parable comes up in, in Jesus' life at kind of an interesting point uh, in, his, in his steps towards the cross. In fact, it's the Tuesday right before he's about to die on that cross. And Jesus' whole life, you could say, was always pointed towards accomplishing the Father's will, right? Living a perfect life in this world, being born as a man and true God, doing all those things perfectly. Uh, on Sunday of that Holy Week, going into Jerusalem on that lowly donkey, going into the temple that afternoon and clearing all of those people out of there because they had made his father's house a den of robbers. And then here we get Jesus on Tuesday of Holy Week coming back into the temple and going face to face with the chief priests and elders of the law, always geared towards accomplishing his father's will and always doing it perfectly. But Jesus not only did that, but his, his message and his intent was also that people would see his Father's will as he taught and as he preached throughout his ministry. And here he came face to face with people who were rejecting it and, and denying it and who were bent on their own will and who only gave authority to what people they thought should have it instead of God's own messenger. Jesus came in to that temple on Tuesday. And as you can imagine, those chief priests and elders were furious because just two days before, he had gone into the temple and cleared out everyone. And it was a special time of the year. Remember, it was the Passover, and so people were all, were there from all over, and they just lost all that money. And they were mad. 
They had not given Jesus authority to do that. They were not happy. So Jesus had to set them straight. And in fact, right before this parable, they questioned him by what authority he was doing these things. And Jesus proposed a counter question to them. He said, I'll tell you if you can tell me whose authority or whose baptism John the Baptist had baptized with. And those chief priests and elders were caught because if they said, well, if it was man's authority, then all those people who had regarded John the Baptist as a prophet would have been upset. And if those chief priests and elders, the people Jesus was talking to, would have said it was God's authority, then they would have validated Jesus as the messenger of God. It's an interesting parable as Jesus tells those chief priests and elders, the the first son who said he wasn't going to go into the vineyard and do his father's will, ended up doing it. And the second son who said, yes, Lord, I'll do it, didn't end up doing it. And you can kind of see the two groups of people that Jesus was talking to. He he connects them for those people listening. The, The chief priests and the elders were the people who said they were going to do the father's will and didn't. And those prostitutes and tax collectors were those very scum of the earth that said they weren't going to do it and listen and then ended up having a change of heart. When you look at that story for your own heart and you see the Lord talking to you this morning, looking at your own heart and exposing it, you maybe think for a second that you don't really fall into either of those categories. You're not a chief priest and elder that is belligerently denying Jesus and his authority, and you might not be a uh, scum of the earth, a tax collector, or a prostitute. But I think that question still remains for you this morning. Jesus knows you aren't a Pharisee or teacher of the law outwardly, but knows inwardly your mindset and thinking is akin to theirs with these questions. Do you find yourself saying one thing about your Savior and doing something else? Do you see yourself doing the will of yourself instead of the will of your Savior who picks you up and calls you back to him every single day of your life? I know I answer yes to those questions so often. And I know you do too, even though I don't know you that well. And the cause is sin in our life. The sinful nature that we're born with, the sin that we live in every single day, the the evil world and the devil himself who gets us to lose focus and to look at our own will instead of the will of the one that he had sent. It's a little scary when he exposes your heart and he he shows you how insincere you are to him every uh, single day. Even as hard as you possibly try, you still fall. But that's the glorious thing about this parable is that uh, in kind of a unique way, there's a, a third son that may not be directly in the story himself. And that third son is the person that you know, Jesus Christ the one who was telling that story, the one who listened to the father and did exactly what his father wanted right away, all perfectly, not for himself, but for you. The one who accomplished his father's will, met the requirements of the law, and gave them all to you and to me, buying you back, bringing you from darkness into life, allowing you to step out into life, acting in line with God's wonderful will. It's a great blessing to to have our hearts exposed. It hurts, and it's hard when God calls us a, a sinner, and yet at the same time, he calls us back through the law to show us how wonderful his gospel message is and that forgiveness of sins that he bought for you on that cross. It's a hard thing. It's easy to say it and to hear it and then to step out into life and to live it. I know at the college there's lots of students for maybe not the first time in their life, but uh, for their first adult time in their life when their parents and guardians aren't there, they, they sometimes see that front and center in their life. They mess up or they have a hardship or something is hurting their heart and you walk them through 
the act of repentance, the Holy Spirit showing them their sin, showing how they fell short of what God's requirement was, but also how glorious God's wonderful forgiveness of sins is in their life. And sometimes they get caught up in the actions instead of looking at how wonderful this whole heart action is that Jesus does in their life through his work. And maybe now in the last couple of weeks as we've started school back up since it's August, it's kind of hard because there's some new things in place with mask policies and social distancing. And, and sometimes it gets really hard as we see the world tell us one thing and then we have to live another way according to our government and, and county and our college policies. But it's the God act every day as he takes you, as he takes those students to show a heart of repentance. How he buys you back, how he exposes your heart and, and doesn't tell you to be more sincere towards him, but makes you sincere because of what his son did on that cross, because of what those chief priests and elders should have seen in their life. And, and actually later in Acts, we get a little snippet of some of those chief priests and elders looking at and repenting and turning to their Lord. A wonderful thing. But that brings us to the second part of our, of our sermon this morning, that we also live and work today testifying to the Father's truth. Kind of was the testimony that Jesus used with those chief priests and elders who were listening to him and this parable here. As Jesus said to them, he said, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Jesus was trying to call them back and validate his Father's will in front of them, and that heart of repentance even more by showing them a prime example in life. And with some pretty harsh words spoken to those people that they did not repent and believe him, he showed, he showed them people that they would have never thought would have listened. The prostitutes and tax collectors. The people who did what they wanted with their bodies and their minds and, and took what they wanted, and yet people who were here that came to hear. That probably were living different lives at this point. Those people were a testimony to those chief priests and elders who were so ignorantly stuck in, in their ways and not listening to Jesus and only bent on the will of their father. And Jesus said, look at the testimony of those people who have listened. Who the Holy Spirit has worked through. Stop doubting and stop rejecting, but look at God's wonderful power at work in their life. What brings us to our second point this morning, we, we work today testifying to the Father's truth. In one way, you might not think about it, but your life is a testimony to yourself, a testimony to God's wonderful power and work in you, testimony to people around you, your friends and relatives, and those people gathered here that the Holy Spirit is doing wonderful things through you calling you back every single day, calling you a sinner and at the same time calling you the most blessed saint on earth. It happens right here. It happens through his word. It happens through the sacraments. It happens through your baptism, which you remember, and, and the Lord's Supper, which we're about to take. It happens because he has brought you from darkness into light. And that you get to live your life as a testimony to that wonderful spirit and power at work in you. It doesn't matter what year it is or in the wake of whatever pandemic or with November 4th inching closer and closer and everyone trying to tell us which side is sincere and which side isn't and what's going to happen now and what's going to happen 20 years down the road. God doesn't want you to worry about any of that. He wants you to worry about that heart of repentance and living and letting other people see that heart of repentance so that he can do the very same thing through them. Working today. Accomplishing the Father's will because of what Jesus has done for you and testifying to his truth. 
It's wonderful how it happens. Whether you're someone who's out in the farm fields right now, or you're a teacher, or banker, or sales clerk, or you work long hours in a factory, or, or you're retired and you're trying to figure out life now and what it looks like, you wake up every single day as a testimony to him who sent his son for you. And it means your life is totally different, even though it might look exactly the same as it did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. Because whenever your last breath is in this life, whether you expect it or you don't see it coming from 100 miles away, you're going to open your eyes someday and see your Savior in heaven. And that mentality right here is what motivates you every day to go to work accomplishing the Father's will as Jesus pours out his Holy Spirit on you and testifying to his truth with the life that he has given you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed uh, found on the screen and also in the front of Christian worship on page 31. We'll say it in unison this morning. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, we're not going to pass the plate around, but we ask if you brought an offering to deposit it in the back of the church, uh, in, the, in the offering plate back there, if you haven't done so already. And uh, just give me a second to get back down to the altar, and we'll continue with the prayer of the church. Please stand. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. 
Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our service continues with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. be seated. Come, the table is prepared for you.
In this sacrament, you have heard God's word and received Christ's true body and blood, which he gave into death for your eternal life. This will keep you strong in the one true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our service continues with Thank the Lord, found on page 36 and also on the screens in front of you. Please stand. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
You may be seated. Just a couple announcements uh, this morning. I was asked to announce that Christy Koch and Alex Nelson were united in marriage on October 10th uh, at Emmanuel in, Mel in Wellington. Uh, we have the richest prayers and blessings on their, their new marriage and life together. I was also asked to announce that Pastor Gunderson uh, out in South Dakota has returned the call uh, to serve here in Fairfax uh, in Wellington. So there'll be another call uh, meeting happening soon, I think maybe within the week or two here, uh, to extend another divine call uh, to another minister. So um, my hearts go out for you as you keep calling, and uh, I hope that a pastor accepts the call. It's always a gut-wrenching thing because he has to discontinue his ministry where he's at and, and come to serve you, but uh, it is a wonderful opportunity that we give our public ministers to discontinue ministry at one spot and to uh, join in on ministry in another spot. Uh, again, my name is uh, Hans Tomford. I'm a pastor. They call me a tutor over at the college. Uh, I teach and live in the dorm uh, along with my wife. We're in one of the, the older classmen's dormitories. Um, it's wonderful to get out of the dormitory in New Ulm and to come preach and share in God's word with you as well. So you can't tell them that I said that, but it is actually nice to leave. So, uh, but have a great rest of your Sunday and a great rest of your week in the Lord. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the way out. Let me just put my